Just to address some upfront concerns immediately, as of the time of recording, no, I have not yet played Super Mario Bros. Wonder. But I am happy it's reviewed well. And no, I have not yet played Spider-Man 2. But I am happy it's reviewed well. And no, I have not played Skull Island Rise of Kong. But I am happy that it has reviewed, like, absolute old pork. So, truly living up to this show's title, this week's news is one week old. Because on October 14th, 2023, Microsoft finally completed its acquisition of Activision Blizzard King. And yeah, it probably doesn't feel like a huge deal because we've been talking about this for a long time. It's done. I fucking did it. There were times where it felt like it wasn't going to happen. It's like being down 3-0 to o in a playoff series. You have a chance, but you don't have a chance. There were times it looked like it would maybe happen. It's 3-3 right now, and they've got a lot of momentum coming into Game 7. And now, finally, nobody has to worry about it anymore. We can all breathe a long, calm, collective sigh of anguish. Because it has happened. It's a thing that's in the past and present now. On the day of the announcement, we saw the expected Phil Spencer post, which honestly isn't that different from the original announcement back in January of 2022. We've gone from welcoming the incredible teams and legendary franchises of Activision Blizzard to Microsoft Gaming, to welcoming the legendary teams at Activision Blizzard King to Team Xbox. And I think actually those minor changes are kind of interesting. Like, it's apparent to me, whereas I used to think they were making the shift to just calling this whole thing Microsoft Gaming, this phrase, Microsoft Gaming, appears several times in this post. During this whole process, Microsoft has never stopped using the word Xbox. I think it might be around to stay. And then also, King does get a lot more respect in the new post. Phil Spencer lists going on an epic streak in Candy Crush as one of his most memorable gaming moments. But no one's going to hold that against him. We all know that's not true. It's just a nice thing to say. Uh, but there's also this part. From Pitfall to Call of Duty, World of Warcraft to Overwatch, Candy Crush Saga to Farm Heroes Saga? Their studios have pushed the boundaries of gaming for players around the world. I kind of feel like two games don't belong there in the boundary pushing category. Like if I can be frank here, I don't think these little veggies are pushing any boundaries. There's one abrupt weird moment in the new post. This part right here. As promised, we will continue to make more games available in more places. And that begins now by enabling cloud streaming providers and players to stream Activision Blizzard games in the European Economic Area. A commitment made to the European Commission. I was thinking, why bring that up so specifically? This was a nice, pleasant celebration before that moment. So then I had to look up the whole deal behind the whole deal, and it turns out that currently... Microsoft only has the rights to stream their games to the European economic area. Because in virtually every other territory, those rights belong to Ubisoft via Ubisoft Plus. So the weird concession that Microsoft made to make the CMA approve the whole deal was that Ubisoft Plus will have streaming rights and streaming licensing rights to all Activision Blizzard games for the next 15 years. So you're wondering, if you live outside of Europe, when will you be able to stream Activision Blizzard games? Well, you'll be happy to know that now that the deal has closed, the operational element can begin to kick off. The kickoff is about to begin. What's strange about this part of the deal to me is that it's apparent now Activision Blizzard has to remain its own distinct entity within Microsoft. Because Ubisoft Plus doesn't have the streaming rights to Microsoft Game Studios games, they only have the streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games. It's so weird. This is the part of the deal, I have no idea how it's going to play out in the future. It could be, Ubisoft Plus could become nothing, or this could be a, an absolute nuisance for a decade and a half to come. Also, going back, talking about these minor changes in the titles, I think that removing franchises, probably just taken out because it was redundant, because they also put out this bombastic celebratory 
acquisition trailer the day of the announcement. And to me, the message of this trailer is just franchises. I don't know, here's a clip from the Warcraft movie where they say home and family. The conclusion is it's a good day to play. And yet, all of these games are presented as cinematically as possible. Nobody's playing anything here. It's about time. Is that what playing StarCraft is like? However, I feel so stupid making fun of that trailer. It's pointless. It's fruitless. It's like walking up to a cool guy in a huge red convertible, and you lean down and you say, Hey man, your car is cheesy. He looks at you like... No, it's not. And then he just drives off. Suddenly you're standing there, feeling like shit. Even though you are right, you're the asshole. Speaking of cool guys, earlier this week, the CEO of Microsoft Gaming, Phil Spencer, was on the official Xbox podcast to give his first interview since the deal closed. And he seems light. He seems like he's having a good time. He seems happy. He seems like a totally different person from the era of Redfall. You can try to take me to positive space. I'm just not in that headspace right now. And I think he was mostly there to cover the important questions. Activision Blizzard games won't be added to Game Pass until 2024. Call of Duty will have feature parody across all platforms, including Nintendo. He's open to Activision Blizzard Studios coming back to old franchises going forward. Again, no mention of Ubisoft Plus, but why would you? Nobody's happy about Ubisoft Plus. But my favorite moments of this whole thing, naturally, are the strange little truthful Phil Spencer moments. It was in the, the video that the teams did, which I know there's been some discussion about should we have done a video for a, an acquisition or not. But Now, I think it is actually so funny that he said that. For a little bit more, here's host Malik Prince saying he cried, wait, almost cried at that trailer. By the way, I cried at, almost cried at that video. That was a cool video uh, that we put out on Friday. So come on, everybody. Um, <laughs> I like the video. I, I like the video. I, I saw some awesome. people. I thought it was yeah. awesome. But um, so we've been talking about. He said, I saw some people, but then he got interrupted by more positivity. What did he see? Who did he see? Here's what I think. I think Phil Spencer knows that video was schmaltzy and stupid. I think he knows. I think he was in a big red convertible. He said, no, it's not cheesy. And he did drive off. But then on his entire drive to the beach, he was thinking about that person who said it was cheesy. Because we know he scrolls. We already know he scrolls. If you look at the top comments of this YouTube video, they're just nothing but nice things and people pointing at the screen and noticing Spyro in there. I don't know if it was a YouTube comment or some blog somewhere or somebody tweeted something at him. I don't know what happened, but he saw someone say, you shouldn't make a trailer for an acquisition, and he internalized it. And then when he was surrounded by his subordinates on an extremely supportive Xbox podcast, it rattled back out of his mind. I find this man fascinating. Alternatively, there is this part. I remember the video <laughs> of you in Studio D with Larry. I don't know if you- I, I know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go back and watch it from time to time because it's really interesting to see how Xbox's vision and journey has changed. And now we're going through this new phase with Activision, Blizzard, King, Bethesda. Um, what is getting you as excited as you were back then about where Xbox is going? You know, it, it's funny. I think there were a lot of cartoons written um, from when Larry and I did that of me saying games, 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 I think dropping some mic. I don't actually think I said that, but uh, but it, the, the, the sentiment was nice. And I was thinking cartoons? People were making cartoons? He doesn't mean memes. Certainly not. And I think what he is talking about is this. The mystifyingly still running comic Control-Alt-Delete by Tim Buckley. It reads... Congratulations on being promoted to head of Xbox, Phil. So tell us a bit about your plans. Games. Thud. What strikes me about this is that Phil Spencer remembered it. And I mean, why wouldn't he? Look how handsome he is in this. And also, important to remember why this comic even exists is that Phil's predecessor, the hapless Don Matrick, he was known online as the TV, TV, TV guy. So in 2014, this seemed really cool. 
And clearly that, too, stuck in his mind. He's proud of it. You can see he's proud of it. He's humble bragging about a Tim Buckley comic that was written in 2014. I'm left with a continued appreciation of Phil Spencer as a human. Microsoft the corporation ingesting one of the largest publishers of video games is bad. It's bad. It's bad. But I do at least like knowing that this person is a leader within the organization. Even if the message to me comes off more like franchises. Thud. For some reason, the very image of Phil Spencer leaning back on a yellow podcast couch, telling these people that he spent the weekend reflecting on the Activision Blizzard deal, it actually makes me happy. Happy for that human. So, that's a new thing for me. And that's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. If I may, I would like to show you a clip that I believe is maybe one of the most ridiculous reality television moments I've ever seen. Incidentally, yes, I'm about to show you another clip from Lego Masters. This is naturally hilarious to me. Here's what clearly happened. The producers thought they would have a big climactic moment at the end where their big volcano blasted an absolute ton of lava goo onto all of the Lego builds of the competitors. Just smother them with lava. However, as we saw throughout the episode, the lava goo is too thick and slow. Somebody brewed some bad lava goo. So clearly in the studio, the one you get one chance at this, when they did erupt the giant volcano, it was just little bits, just a little spattering of orange lava goo. And then when Will Arnett says, That was so worth the wait. You know it wasn't worth the wait. And then in post, when they were editing this, the producer could have just said, Well, the volcano bit didn't work out. Let's just cut that out. Instead... They presumably said, make it work. I don't care what you add, make it pop. Make this an event, make it big. Make it entertaining, make it splashy. Make people believe the volcano erupted. And that was the result. So if I have to make this relevant, if I have to bring this back to video games, I do feel it is, if not the same, a similar impulse. It's the same thing that made the Microsoft editor terrified of showing Minecraft in first person. What if that's not entertaining enough? And I feel like it's the same reason we get these commercials that just don't show video games. Imagine the experience of touching space sand. Imagine the experience of being in a Call of Duty lobby. Imagine the experience of having a cyberpunk boyfriend in your kitchen. Imagine the experience of being Spider-Man.